What is up guys? In this video today, what I'm going to be doing is breaking down episode three of the Netflix documentary, The Playbook. So I'm going to be giving my three takeaway points from this episode and it is on the amazing legendary coach. Some people love him, some people hate him. The amazing coach, the special one, Jose Mourinho currently manager of Tottenham Hotspurs. So for all my Tottenham fans, all my fans of previous places that Jose Mourinho has coached, stick around for this video as I debunk and we look into detail as to all the decisions that Jose Mourinho has made to kind of make his coaching career. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what's up guys, my name is Philip and I'm a sports psychology consultant and in this video, episode three, oh, it was amazing. It was so great to kind of just learn a lot more about Jason Mourinho. We hear so much about him in the media, so much about him through kind of different media outlets, but it was really great to kind of hear different situations which we've heard of before, but then hear about it from his perspective. So that was really great. It was hilarious how the documentary started where he was sitting down, he came, sat down, and the first couple of questions, he was like, No, don't the speaker. No? Okay. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not gonna answer that. I'm not gonna answer that. He's probably the only coach who would ever agree to an interview and then reject so many questions. So that was hilarious. A typical start for Jason Mourinho. But then my first takeaway point from this video, number one, was the rules that he made, the rules that he uses that creates kind of his coaching philosophy and what he uses as a coach. And so these were six rules and these rules were know your audience, if you're prepared for the worst, you're prepared, the underdog attack, some rules are meant to be broken, the train doesn't stop twice, don't coach the player, coach the team. And so with these six different rules, you can see it painted out throughout the whole episode and not only just through the whole episode, but through all the teams that he's kind of coached. He didn't just kind of stick with one team throughout these six rules, which kind of previous episodes have done. In this one, he showed a lot of examples from Chelsea, a lot from um, Real Madrid, Inter Milan and multiple different teams that he's kind of been a part of. So that whole situation with the rule of rules are meant to be broken. We saw him breaking those rules when he went into that laundry bar basket and kind of break that rule that was made for him that he wasn't able to kind of interact with his plays for a set amount of time and so we can really see different situations I think that happened when he was with Chelsea you can also see in some other situations where his rules have been incorporated in some decisions that he's made so for example in the rule that he set that the train doesn't stop twice he showed that rule through um, being at Inter Milan and playing really well they're coaching a really great team and they were very very successful but then instead of staying there for another season he then chose to go to Real Madrid go to like a new challenge a bigger challenge and something that he was really hungry towards kind of going and achieving in that area and so instead of being complacent with where he was within his career which was really successful at the time he then took that opportunity you can tell he was very emotional about taking that job but then that did actually help his career he did go on to be successful in that Spanish league with Real Madrid and so that was a really great decision that he did make and you can really just see throughout his whole career these six rules haven't only impacted him on how he coaches on the field but it's personally helped him and make decisions off the field within his own personal coaching career. And so sticking with his coaching career on the field this leads me to my second takeaway point of this Netflix documentary and that was the psychology side of it. The psychology side that he uses as a coach which not a lot of coaches really use and they don't really emphasize. Some people use maybe one or two aspects of it but a lot of coaches don't really emphasize it 100% throughout multiple areas within their coaching style and you can really see that Jose Mourinho really respects the psychological area which was great to kind of see being a sports psychology consultant myself but then also he shows that within how he coaches his team Teams, how he recruits players and he looks at different psychological things which he knows are going to be important for his team and so the psychological areas that he felt that are going to be important for his tactics that he likes within a team those were having a high level of competitiveness sacrifice and aggression 
and he knows that these qualities are needed not only to win one or two games but for the season goals that he normally has with each team and that's winning trophies winning multiple trophies and so that requires a lot of these kind of psychological areas which he believes are going to be really important throughout the season and so with these areas of competitiveness sacrifice and aggression they all relate to a sports psychology area and that's kind of mental toughness that toughness mentally that you have to then consistently produce a high level of performance when things are going great as well as when things are going bad and so he really shows this psychological area within an example where man united at the time were the top team in europe nobody really wanted to face them and his team were a little scared about potentially facing them within the champions league and so he saw that he saw that that was evident and so he kind of incorporated this area of mental toughness through using his voice through using communication styles towards constantly telling his players yes we want man united we want them we want to play them we want to defeat them we have everything that it takes to defeat them and so as he slowly started to continually say this their players started to believe this and it got to a point where they actually wanted to play man united in the champions league and so they actually ended up playing man united in the Champions League they got drawn that team and then they actually went on to kind of win that match and so it really shows that he does believe in that psychological area and he does believe that mental toughness is needed throughout the whole season to achieve those sporting success that he's done multiple years with multiple different teams and so moving away from that psychology side that he really emphasizes as a coach my third takeaway point within this episode is more his coaching style in general through everything he was saying as a coach it really feels that he has a kind of personal kind of internal kind of touch and an internal kind of characteristic that he's developed which makes him really unique as a coach and that's probably why he believes he's the special one and so within the documentary he gave multiple examples around different ways he kind of feels are the right time to be aggressive and feels when the right time is to kind of be a bit more defensive and so he kind of used examples of kind of the crowd noise and believing that the crowd noise whether they're going to be really loud or whether they're really antsy that really has an impact on how the team is actually playing and that fosters his belief of whether he should be more aggressive at that time and whether he should be a little more defensive so he really uses that momentum which is kind of generated from the crowd to his advantage so if he's at an away match and he feels that the crowd is being a bit more kind of antsy, they don't really know what's going to be happening, he feels, okay, that's the time we really need to press, we need to be aggressive, and we need to capitalise on this situation. And that's really helped him in a lot of situations. And so you can really see that kind of internal kind of characteristic, which he's developed through multiple experiences of playing away, playing at home, playing with different crowd situations, which has really given him kind of an internal compass to make the decisions that he's been making. And so another area within his kind of coaching style, which I really liked hearing about within the documentary, was that he has the same mentality when coaching the big players to the small players. He really does believe that they should be treated equally. And I feel like that helps team morale, that kind of helps team confidence and team cohesion just overall. And he has coached some big, big players. And so to hear that from his perspective, that's really unique and really interesting to kind of hear. And so although he can be very, very stubborn and we've seen a lot of his kind of stubborn antics within the media and on the sideline when he's coaching. They ask me, my team? Do you want to know my team tomorrow? Yeah. So why don't you ask me? What's your team tomorrow? It's too late. I'm sorry. <laughs> the stats don't lie with him and he has produced multiple, multiple championships from multiple different um, countries, multiple different leagues, multiple big leagues. And so the stats really don't lie. And so he's won the Premier League three times. He's won 25 trophies in 10 years from four different countries, four different big countries and he's won multiple Manager of the Year awards. And so I'm sure Tottenham fans are praying that this sporting success as a coach can be brought into their club as they look to kind of bring more silverware into the club, whether that's through Champions League, Premier League, FA Cup, etc. They really want that kind of winning juice that he has as a coach, bringing that into the club for kind of more sporting success in the future. Because they definitely have the team for it and potentially Jose Mourinho can really help them get to that next level and actually not just get to the finals and just compete there, but actually go there consistently and win those trophies. 
And so we'll see what happens within the near future as Jason Mourinho spends more and more time at Tottenham. We'll kind of see how his rules, those six rules that he kind of abides by, how that's going to be implemented into Tottenham and see whether that's going to give them the sporting success that they really want or if it's just going to be a short spell where Jose Mourinho is going to be fired. So we'll see. And so one thing within this documentary, which actually is really good, that they've shown football in two different episodes, but the two different coaches that they've used are really interesting. One coach, Jose Mourinho, is on the men's side, and Jill Ellis, which they've used on the female side, is not only on the female side, but then on the international side of that female. So it's two different unique perspectives. And so if you haven't seen that video as yet, I've done a breakdown of that, go check that out. Or if you haven't seen episode one of my breakdown as well with Doc Rivers, a completely different coach, Coach, completely different sport go check that out as well this is a great documentary thank you for watching subscribe for more content just like this sports sports psychology and anime content if you like this video hit that like button and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video